This is the Idikai Mary's Ministries uh, bringing you our evening service on the second Sunday uh, after Pentecost. Um, the show that brings this to you in Idikai Mary's Ministry is what we call the celebration today. Um, Pentecost is not just an event that happens in the Christian calendar. And after that, we have to wait until the next uh, Sunday in Pentecost. Then we celebrate uh, the celebration of Pentecost. And that is it. For me, Pentecost is an everyday event. Because the Holy Spirit dwells, is seeking a place of rest. Therefore, I make myself a comfortable place for the Holy Spirit to dwell in. Therefore, Pentecost happens to me every moment. The Holy Spirit is seeking for a companion. He's seeking for a place where he can find softness and tenderness and he will dwell there. That's just by the way. This evening, we are reading from Mark chapter 5 from verse 1 to verse 43 we are reading the whole passage remember in the morning service when we talked about do not permit it that was the topic and and we 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 shared certain things in there this evening we are actually reading the whole passage and i want you to spend time and read the entire chapter of mark Chapter 5. It is, it is a very amazing piece of sacred scripture. Now let me go straight to what we, we have to share with you today. In Mark chapter 5, from verse 1 to verse 43, there is like a big punch line that comes out from the entire passage and I bring it to you this evening so that you can begin to see the way that things are supposed to be done. When I read the Bible, I am looking for the language that God speaks and the way that God does things and that is my language and that is the way that I do things. Now, the title of our teaching this evening says, the title of our teaching this evening says, put a demand on it. Put a demand on it. For those of you who have not experienced a certain aspect of the kingdom of wickedness, you might not be familiar with this area, this territory, and that's why I'm taking you there. For those of us who come from the families of diviners and families of traditional healers in Africa, we know what we are talking about. I know what I'm talking about. In the world of darkness, Whenever they cast a spell, whether through music or through movie or through incantations or through words of mouth and sacrifices, they put a demand on what they want. 
and it come to pass. And we Christians do not know how to put a demand for what we truly want because we are afraid. We think that it will be outside the will of God. If it is good, it must be God. And if it is God, then it must be good. Hallelujah. I talk to you this way because I have experienced the power of God and I know that when I speak into things and into atmosphere, they listen to me. The reason is because I stop permitting them to control me and to rule over me and I began to put a demand on what I want before the Almighty Father and He, my good Father, began to honor my word. Put a demand on what you need and it will come to pass. Let's go straight to this portion. Three people put a demand on God, put a demand on Jesus and it happened in one biblical passage. First, this man of Gadarenes, the madman, the crazy man of Gadarenes, the insane, the lunatic. It was not even him that sought Jesus for deliverance. The demons in him put a demand on Jesus that led to his deliverance. Have you read that portion carefully? It wasn't the man. Because he was not normal, was not in charge of his mindset. But the demon in him saw Jesus appeared. Because wherever Jesus appeared, the atmosphere changes. The condition changes for good. For those of you who are from Nigeria, you have this broken English that says, I bring better. Everywhere Jesus went, he brought good things. Better things begin to happen. Deliverance begin to happen. That is the Christian gospel. That's the good news. That's all it's about. It's not about history and about politics. It's about deliverance. It's about people being made better. And the demons in him seeing Jesus, there were many. That's why, we, that's why the demon said we are legion because there are many of us in him. Human beings spend their time looking for solution and they call demons to come out from their prison in hell to, 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 to the earth to come and inhabit anything and anybody. The difference between God and the devil is this. God inhabits human beings. His atmosphere his presence might be in a place at a particular time or linger for a long time, but really he dwells in, in he inhabit people in order to establish his government through those people. But for the devil, they inhabit not just people, they inhabit anything. Like in, in the in the Old Testament, serpent, they inhabit trees, they inhabit uh, and here in this story, they, 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 the demons in this man ran to Jesus and did something. And it is three, three people did the same thing. The demon possessed, the demons in the man used the man's body, ran to Jesus, knelt before him, worshipped him. They worshipped him. They knew that he was the son of God. Who tells you that demons do not know Jesus? They do. And they know who you are. Whether you are covered with the fire and the blood, whether you're truly in God or in Christ, in the Holy Ghost, accompanied by the angels of God or not, the demons knows. So they ran to Jesus and they put a demand on Jesus. They said, listen man, don't send us back to the thick darkness of hell. We know we are already God's prisoners. The time is not yet. But you know one thing? We are putting a demand on you, Jesus, son of the living God. Don't start something before the time. We know there is a set time by day. You know, we know there is a set time by God Almighty. But don't start anything now. And Jesus obeyed them. He, he listened to them. 
The demons in him actually say, send us to the pigs. We will enter the pigs. We don't want to go back there to take darkness. Send us to the... And he did. And through a demand that demons put on Jesus, this man became normal. See that? If demons could put a demand on Jesus, why are you not doing it? You child of God that wants something from Jesus, why are you not putting a demand on the Father? Father, this is what I need. This is my condition. Set me free from it. I demand for this because you love me. And see what will happen. <laughs> Second person that put a demand on Jesus in the same chapter is this woman that has had issue with blood flowing out of her uncontrollable for 12 years. And she said, this guy that I'm seeing, he's not just a mere teacher. This man, there's something more about him. If only I touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made well. And she did it. She put a demand on the power upon Jesus because she's seen him heal before. And what happened? The power, the virtue in Jesus responded, kick in immediately. When you put a demand on God, the power of God will kick in. Todd, Jairus, he came to Jesus fell down, worship him, just like the woman did, just like the demon using this man did. Jairus came, worship him too, and said, my daughter is dying. Come and lay your hand on her, and she will leave. And Jesus did it. Three of them put a demand on Jesus. Let me ask you something. If you want your environment to change, every atmosphere that you go into, things happen. Begin to be a true worshiper. Don't just go to church on Sunday and sing or show off new clothes and new hairstyles, you know, and smell good. And know that sometimes we do these things for God, which is good. Go because you want to worship. God is looking for people that he can comfortably, softly inhabit them. People with tenderness, people with trust, people that he can have fun with. And in this regard, they are worshiping him. They are true worshipers of God. They, every day, every day they worship him because they know that power dwells there. Love dwells there. Put a demand on God and see whether God is not going to do something for you. Put a demand on it. What is it that you're dealing with? Sickness? Poverty? Confusion and troubles? Demonic attack? What is it? You can put a stop to it today by putting a demand on God and saying, Father, set me free. Jesus is about time. And in this broadcast, I call on those of you who are dealing with various problems in your life. And you don't know what to do. Instead of going to the negative powers, let me tell you what I used to tell people. I say to them, listen, you have problem, come to me. Come to me. I'm anointed to solve your problems because the living one lives in me. You don't need to go to the traditional, uh, 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 the traditional uh, 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 principalities and entities to look for solution. I've been ordained for these kind of things. To preach the gospel to the meek, to raise the dead, to chase demons out of people and send them back to their prison. To cleanse uh, leprosy today might be AIDS or cancer. You know? And to heal the sick. And I'm ready for that. And God has made me ready for it. So why do you want to go to the other side for protection or for the provisions of life or to, or to solve your problem when it's right here? I call upon you to begin to put a demand on God through worship. Put a demand on Him through trust, through believing that Jesus is King. Hallelujah. He is truly the King of Israel. And I pray for you today 
that the Almighty God will begin to visit you and miracles will begin to burst out of your life because of one thing you believe and you put a demand on it. <laughs>